Bismillah Rahman rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and with the final BJT configuration that is the common collector configuration. We are done with the common base, we are done with the common emitter. Today the final that is the common collector configuration. Before we begin let me tell you the weather is extremely beautiful outside. Okay. So I will have to wind up this video and go out for a walk. So if I am going a little quickly, I am sorry for that. Anyways, the common collector configuration, the collector would be common in between the output and the input side. So let's say if I draw it, so if this is my base terminal, so upward let's say I am drawing the emitter terminal and downward I am drawing the collector terminal. So if this is my base, this is my emitter and this one is my collector, so the collector would be grounded. Now the base emitter junction has to be forward biased which means the base has to be at a plus terminal at a higher terminal with respect to the respect to the emitter. So the emitter I would just place it at a negative terminal. So these are now the biasing potentials. This I would name as a VBB connected to the base. This I would name it as a VEE connected to the emitter side. Now this is for an N P and transistor. Similarly, you can also have it for a P and P transistor. Now the directions of currents over here, so have a look, the base current would be the entering current over here, the emitter current is the leaving current over here and similarly the collector current is the entering current. For a P and P transistor what would happen is the same configuration if I draw, so now this would be the direction of the emitter. So the emitter would now have this sort of a polarity. The polarities would reverse and similarly the direction of current. So this would be VEE plus to minus and over here you would have a negative positive. Negative positive VBB. This is your base terminal, this is your emitter terminal, this is collector. The base current would leave. The, 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 the collector current would leave and the emitter current would enter. So well nowadays I am liking a single color, not colorful because that is a little distracting maybe the change of the marker. What do you say about this? How about a single color or a colorful board? Let me know in the comment section. So anyways, this is it. So which means the collector is common to the input and the output side. The input is applied at the base. The output is taken at the emitter terminal. Right? Yes, sir. So what do you have? What do you have? So uh, of course you could, uh, you know, if you have resistances involved over here, so in that case this VBB would not be equal to this potential. What is VBC? So this is the difference at B and C potential differences. Over here BB and BC are the same because we have not got any current limiting resistance. Similarly VBE and similarly VCE. VCE. So these are the differences. Now the difference would arrive when, when you have a current limiting resistance involved. In this case, the biasing potential is the same as the difference of potentials between the two terminals of the BJT. VBE is equal to, where VCE is the sum of the two. We know this again, VCE is the sum of the two, that is VBE plus VBC. So the input is applied at what? Input at the base terminal. The output is taken at the emitter, the, the emitter terminal, yes. So, which means now what do we have? We have the input characteristics. We have the input characteristics. So for the input characteristics, the input current versus the input voltage. So, so the input current would be IB. And the input voltage is VB, VB, C, VBC, VBC, IB versus VBC or VCB. So the collector base junction is basically the reverse biased one. The collector base junction is the reverse biased one. 
VBC or VCB, which one is at a higher potential? So B is at a higher potential. So VBC is right. So VBC is the reverse biasing potential. Is the reverse biasing potential. So now you know very well IB is the base current. So you know from the early effect again or the base width modulation. I will not go into the detail. What happens is if the reverse biasing potential increases, this implies what? That the width of the depletion layer increases. If this increases, the width of the base decreases, which means that the recombination decreases. If the recombination decreases, this means that the base current decreases. So with the degrees of the reverse bias potential VBC, the current, the base current IB, decreases yes yes so this is the curve this is from the early effect or the base width modulation similarly you have the output characteristics so the output characteristics would be what they would be a curve of the output current of the output current which is what the output current is IE versus the output voltage which is VEC. VEC or VCE, whatever it is. But have a look for the proper ones. C is at a lower terminal with respect to E. Oh, we are considering this one. VCE, okay. So for this you will have VCE, for this you will have VEC, right? So let's say VBC, I draw for this. So I will write over here also VCE. So the collector to emitter, now this is what? IE versus VCE would be what? So you know very well that IE is alpha times IC or IC is alpha times IE, whatever it is. Let me just confirm it properly. Uh, IC is alpha times IE. IC is alpha times IE, right? And the value of alpha is, is about 0 0.95 to 0 0.99 somewhere somewhere which is approximately close to 1 right so if this is approximately close to 1 this would imply that ic is approximately equal to ie although a little smaller although a little smaller but approximately equal to ie so which means that this curve could be the collector current versus vce and the collector current versus vce we already know from the previous video versus VCE we know from the common emitter configuration of the diode we've seen in the previous video in a greater detail so this is the curve this is the graph this is the graph like this this is let's say for IB1 this is for IB2 so as IB increases IC will increase or IE will increase yes so we've already seen what was this voltage in the previous video we calculated this voltage from 0.2 where the, the 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 current level was going from the saturation mode this one was the saturation mode into the active mode this was going from the saturation mode to the active mode right yes now so so these are the output characteristics of course this this current could be a little greater for this common emitter configuration right yes similarly you can find out the the input and the output resistances from here so the input resistance from the change of voltage to the change of current you could do manipulations in terms of beta and alpha and this and that. We're not interested. I'm not interested. Similarly, you can have the output resistance from here, which would be the change of VCE to the change of IE or IC. So you can do the manipulations again by yourself. Whatever I, I have a, a point to tell you, the VCE is what? whatever it is but I need to tell you about the the breakdown voltage we see E right collector to emitter would be a reverse bias voltage so I need to tell you about the breakdown I need to tell you something about the breakdown oh uh, no that is not over here but that is not over here, but you know, uh, the comparison is IC is also from the common emitter configuration, right? So in the common emitter, what do we have? I told you in the previous video and this point I missed again that if this is the reverse current, the reverse leakage current, 
what is the reverse breakdown voltage the reverse the reverse voltage right so iceo is greater than icbo i already have told you this iceo is greater than icbo but the breakdown potential i also have told you of the collector base junction is greater than the collector emitter junction the breakdown voltage v c e is less than the breakdown voltage of vcb common emitter and common base so have a look this would be iceo and this would occur at a lesser voltage iceo and this is the breakdown voltage vce and similarly this one is your icbo and this is your breakdown voltage vcb fine so this is what related to this we, we we could see that after this we could have a a breakdown right so we know this from the previous video so this one i missed in the previous video again the multiplication factor in this and that so you know the input characteristics the output characteristics you know whatever it is now similarly i may have used the word early voltage by extrapolating the curve to the left hand side somewhere so you not you should not go into the detail of that just let it go for finding out the resistance just go for the change of voltage to the change of current ratio right yes now now the thing is that over here again the characteristics are what if i talk about some characteristics of this so the characteristics is that it has a low input uh, impedance it has a now this is used mainly mainly for impedance matching this is mainly used for impedance matching and impedance matching is what so you know this better than me you could have studied it in your network theory the use of transformers nothing to do over here for now the second what why is it used like this because its input impedance is low the resistance input is low right this is one property another is the output resistance is also not high this is also low fine then we talk about the phase shift so again it does not provide any phase shift phase shift is equal to zero degrees then you have what the current gain is low the voltage gain is low the voltage gain is low and the current gain is high why because it is providing it multiplying it with a with a bigger factor of a beta plus one beta is quite a higher value right yes no no this is a mistake anyways i'm coming to this the power gain would be moderate if one is high the other is low so the power gain is moderate now i have not mentioned this point earlier i did not i did not talk about the this gamma gamma is a factor we have a current amplification factor of gamma as alpha and beta we have a current amplification factor of gamma over here so let me write the current amplification factor in current amplification factor in common collector configuration is what it's gamma and gamma would be the change of the output current to the change of the input current which implies what that gamma is equal to the change of ie upon change of ib so this is what it is right how ie varies as a function of ib so let's say we have a look we have a look through a formula we have a look through a formula and what is that formula so i've written it over here we know that ic is equal to alpha times ie plus the leakage current icbo or ico whatever it is then you also know that ie is equal to ic plus ib so if you put this two in one ie is equal to put the value of ic alpha times ie uh, 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 we've put where over here plus ICBO plus IB 
right yes so you can just put it over take the L9 SL for over here IE is taken common IB plus ICBO 1 over 1 minus alpha IE is equal to gamma times IB plus gamma times ICBO where gamma is is what 1 over 1 minus alpha gamma is 1 over 1 minus alpha right so this is what I have so the current gain is quite high in this case 1 over 1 minus alpha is beta plus 1 yes so we we see this in the next video the the, the difference between i told i talked about beta plus 1 over here so 1 over 1 minus alpha is beta plus 1 and we see this in the next video so that's all about it that's all about the common collector configuration the input characteristics the output characteristics the design of it so that's all about the BJT configurations as well. See in the next lecture where we try to just summarize the things with some a little points. And after that we will go on to the DC biasing of BJT. Still then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.